This uh, topic will be just doing another example of uh, determining a rate law expression from the method of initial rates just with a lot more complicated um, system where we now have two reactants. So the first thing we need to do is just write down the general expression for the rate law. So if the chemical reaction is a molecule of A and two molecules of B, um, then the two reactants are A and B, and so the rate is going to be a constant times A to some power. We do not know the power. And B to some power could be a different power. And again, we don't know uh, what that power is going to be. <clears throat> so the key to actually working this is to do the same things we did last time, is take the rate uh, law expression, then substitute in the molarities and the rates, and then take another experiment and do the same thing, and then take one divided by the other. Uh, but the, we'll have to look and see what two experiments to, would be actually best to compare. So if you want to know how the rate depends on A, you keep B the same, or otherwise, if you change B, you don't know if the change in the rate occurred because of the change in B or change in A. So what we'll do is we'll pick the first two experiments. A is not changing. B is being more or less doubled. So if B gets doubled, we expect the rate to change as some power of 2 for the B part. And so that's going to tell us you now it might change not at all, in which case it would be a zero-order reaction. There's no effect of uh, the uh, rate from uh, changing concentration of B, or it could be first order, in which case we expect to see the rate double, or second order, where we expect to see it go by 2 to the squared, which is 4 times faster. If it was a third-order reaction, it would be going up by a factor of 8, which is 2 cubed. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, take this expression. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put a little subscript 1 on every compound, and then I'm just going to rewrite the exact same expression. And now I'm just going to use experiment 2. But uh, as I said before, let's put experiment two on top. So let's go ahead and change these twos to a one. Uh, ones to a two, twos to a one. That way we won't wind up with a fraction. All right, so now we're going to just take one side divided by the other. And we're going to get rate two over rate one. Now the rate here is written in a kind of an odd way. First of all, I didn't put any of the units in here because that it's understood that the units of A and B are molarity and the, the units of rate are molar per second. But the other thing that we did is these are very slow reactions. So it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4, 6 times 10 to the minus 4. And so the way you get rid of those 10 to the minus 4 is you multiply it by 10 to the 4. So it's a very common way of expressing a rate, uh, a power of 10 in scientific paper. It could be very confusing if you've never seen it before. All right, so rate 2 is really 6.0 times 10 to the minus 4 molar per second. <clears throat> That's uh, what happens when you multiply this number by 10 to the 4 molar per second. Uh, well, when you multiply this by 10 to the minus 4 molar per second, you get this number. All right, and so um, rate 1, 1.5. K over K, that's 1. Uh, A2 over A1, to the X power. And uh, let's go ahead and put the numbers in. I'll put them in the next step. All right, so A2 over A1, B2 over B1. Notice what we did since they're both raised to the y power, we just take the fraction first. All right, so the left hand side is a 4. This will be, all right, so a2 over a1, uh, that's 0.001 divided by 0.001. 
Well, that's 1 to the x power. Well, 1 to any power is 1. So actually, the only thing that's going to be changing is b. So we have 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.001. And that ratio is 2, and so 2 it's raised to the y power. And so we figure out that y equals 2. All right, so we know 1 of the exponents. Okay, now we're going to repeat this for um, experiments. Let's see. Uh, if we choose experiment 3 and experiment 1, b is not being changed and a is being doubled. So we could use experiment 3 and experiment 1, or we could look at experiment 4 and we have 0.002, 0 .002. we can ex compare 4 to 2, and B is not changing, and A is being double. So we could either compare 3 and 1 or 4 and 2, so we're going to compare 4 and 2 just because. Uh, why not? Okay, so um, I'm going to more or less do the shortcut method on this guy. So um, if the ratio is 2 and the rate goes up by a factor of 4, okay? So let me just write down a, a declarative sentence. See if, if A is doubled, oops, edit doubled, rate increases by 4, okay? <clears throat> so 4 equals 1 times 2 to the x times uh, 1 to, well, we already know that exponent. <laughs> All right, so x equals 2 as well. So the rate law is now known, okay? And so that is uh, something we can write right here by the experiment. So now we know rate is equal to k times a squared times b squared. All right, so that's one type of problem that you would be expected to be able to work uh, uh, in any situation on an exam, <clears throat> online homework, whatever. All right, note how these exponents do not match the 1 to 2 here. It's 2 to 2. So again, this is not certainly as, um, what you would have expected uh, before you started learning about kinetics. All right, so now <clears throat> we can solve for the rate constant. Okay, and so since this is more or less a property of this chemical reaction, it shouldn't matter which experiment we choose, we should get the same rate constant. All right, so we'll choose experiment four to determine and solve for K. All right, so let's do that right underneath. So uh, 24 times 10 to the minus four molar per second is equal to K times, all right, um, A for experiment 4 is 0 0.002, and B is also 0 0.020 molar squared. Right, so when you actually solve this, you get 0 0.002 molar squared, 0 0.002 squared, and molar squared divide both sides and you should get K equals 1.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 to the 8 molar minus 3 second minus 1. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to actually calculate the rate of reaction. Now that we know 
the rate law expression, we know the K, we can choose any two numbers for the molarity A and B and calculate the rate. So that's the last thing we're going to do here. So let's uh, go ahead and write down the rate of experiment phi is equal to the K, 1.5 times 10 to the eighth molar minus three, second minus one, All right, times 0.25 molar squared, and 0.15 molar squared. All right, so get out the old calculator. And it's going to be 1.4 times 10 to the 6. Molar per second. Okay, notice what happened with the units of the rate. Units are molar per second because we have molar to minus 3 times molar squared times molar squared. That's going to be molar to fourth. And so the product of all those molarity powers is going to be molar to the first power. All right, so um, let's go ahead and fill in our table. Well, times 10 to the fourth. So that's going to be uh, quite a bit. Uh, different. So that's going to be times 10 to 10. This is way faster. Okay, so <laughs> the reason it's way faster, of course, these concentrations are much higher than these concentrations. And of course, the rate depends on the concentrations to square. So not only are we changing the molarity a lot, we're raising it to the fourth power. Uh, so you get a huge increase in the rate from that. Okay, that ends the lecture on uh, doing an example of the method of initial rates.